Good morning, folks. Today we'll get to some major electric news, but first, the Sun and Earth are both re-entering active phase after a slumber. We've got solar eruptions, earthly storms, earthquakes, and what you're seeing here is the end of the extended silence in the inner solar system and the solar eruptions leaving its atmosphere. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. We've got to have our eyes set on the left side, south of the equator, where a tiny sunspot group has developed and completely stolen the show. Watch the flash, then pops, rippling the corona, blasting solar plasma out into space. Impressive amount of plasma ejected given the fact that the solar flares were not tremendously powerful. Let's see them a bit better here in 131 angstroms. The flashes are Earth-sized explosions of X-rays and extreme ultraviolet light triggered by crashing, shifting, and snapping umbral magnetic fields above the sunspot. Quickly peeking at the X-ray flux, Definitely an uptick in flaring by comparison, but still only to C-class flaring. Haven't jumped up into that scarier M-class yet. As of yesterday, our focus was mostly on the northern sunspots because of their size, but another active region developed quickly to the south of them. Starting with the northern group with our magnetic analysis, we take a closer look and see that it retains a nicely spread magnetic structure. Minor mixing potential only, but on the south, we have a slightly smaller but vastly more complex system, like the difference between a weak tropical system and the heart of an F5 tornado. There are no magnetic patterns, just a mishmash of sunspot umbra with lots of opportunities for them to interact and produce flares. The Earth-facing solar quiet begins another test today because these spots will turn to face our planet over the next 48 hours and continue for another two or three days. Eruption watch begins on our star now. Let's come to the solar wind because it continued to intensify yesterday, cracking 700 kilometers per second. This triggered a bump up to level 2 geomagnetic storm events on the verge of stronger weather and health effects if we go up one more. But as it is, we have every storm factor on the sun ramping up, including extra plasma penetration through our atmosphere. We'll expect to see its signature in tonight's U.S. weather, but we are still a ways from getting to that. Right now we're seeing the top quakes of the last day here. Got a six-pointer, although not significant. A blot echo preceded the six-pointer by 30 minutes. Let's see some electrical space stories. First, we're with the ESO, where stellar formation was seen occurring inside cosmic jets at the galactic scale, which means that young, jet-forming stars might be rogue planet birthers with their ability to produce cosmic jets as well. After this, we're redefining how spacemen will think about wind power. Imagine a tremendous dust storm, except the tiny silica particles bring 10 to 100 times the static electricity. Bet they get some awesome lightning. Then, we're looking at the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter's peak at Rainier Gamma, where they say it's the Moon's crustal magnetic fields creating these patterns and swirls. They still think the oblong crater in the middle of them is unrelated, which is hilarious. Next, we go to the ESA, where the Swarm mission has put out an enormous tip of the hat to Christian Birkeland, even mentioning him by name. The Birkeland currents appear to be more like sheets, vastly more complex than Birkeland would have imagined. They know where they are coming in, which sheets force which way, and how the plasma caught between them is energized to create arcades through the atmosphere, which are almost certainly what you may have seen in the news a couple of years ago here, apparently where that plasma L-shell originates. Cyclone Debbie has thankfully taken an axe to its power profile. Landfall will do that to the storm. But it's going to hustle back to the coast a bit to the southeast, Eyes on this one over the coming days, as the lack of devastating winds is no reason to sleep on her just yet. Moving on to the United States, with this much space weather, it is shaping up to be a very scary evening in the center of the country. I'm concerned that central system will take an intensification and drop major tornadoes with the Gulf energy entering the system as well. Now that I say that, please get away from New Mexico. Thank you. Folks, observing the frontier is less than two weeks away. Make sure your travel and hotel plans are set. Sold out show to be audio recorded for placement with the slides and delivery to all of you. No worries. It's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.